You are now looking at the brand new Tesla Model 3. This is the brand new refresh design that we've been expecting for some time, and it looks like the rumors were almost true in every way. And what's best, this car is available to order now in some regions across the world, but not the UK just yet. In this video, I'm gonna be covering everything that's new with this brand new Tesla Model 3, and make sure you watch to the end because I'm gonna be talking about some of the potential drawbacks as well. Hey, welcome to the video. So it looks like the Tesla Model 3 has had its first significant update and a bit of a redesign. In this video, I'm first of all gonna go through each section of the car and tell you what's new. So first of all, let's look at the exterior design. The Model 3 has brand new thinner lighting at the front and the back of the car, and already online, people are saying they either love or hate this design. Now let me know what you think of this refresh in the comments section below. So the front headlights have had the biggest change. Look how slim they look on this new model. Now, even though you can't really tell it from these videos or photos, apparently the actual creases in the body sides are a little bit more pronounced as well. So that's gonna enhance the car's visual length. If we go to the rear of the car, we can see the taillights have completely changed and they look like a nice thin LED strip now, which is pretty cool. Also, we've ditched the Tesla badge and now we have the word Tesla all the way across the boot. New wheel designs have been introduced, including fresh aero caps for lower spec versions and new light colored upgraded wheels for the higher end models. What do you think about these new alloy rims for the long range and performance? Not too sure. We've got two new paint colors, ultra red and stealth gray. Now going back to the front of the car, you can see they've actually removed the fog lights altogether. It's now part of an integrated system. Now let's take a look inside the car. The interior has had a massive upgrade as well. You can see the aesthetic and material upgrades, including new door panel upholstery and wraparound LED ambient lighting, which look pretty cool. This is definitely something that makes the interior of the Model 3 look much more futuristic. We also have a brand new steering wheel. And if you look very closely, you'll notice that we no longer have the indicator stalk or the gear shift stalk on either side of the steering wheel. These have been completely removed and are now accessed using buttons on the steering wheel. The center console has had a little bit of a refresh as well, and apparently it's now made out of aluminum over the plastic of the past. In the rear, we have a brand new eight inch touchscreen. So that means your users can watch films on the go. They can control Netflix and music, as well as changing the temperature controls. In addition to that, the stereo system has been improved as well. We now have a 17 speaker system up from the 14 speakers of the previous models. And then finally on the interior, we have vented seats. So not only will you get heating, you'll also get cooling too. Now, when it comes to any electric car, the specifications and the range are super important. So what we can see here is the new Model 3 has a drag coefficient of 0.219, down from an already impressive 0.23. Now, Tesla claims this is gonna boost the range between five and 8%, depending on the type of car that you go for. So for reference, the rear wheel drive standard car now has an official range of up to 344 miles, up from currently 305. Whilst the long range car, which is the car I currently have, um, boasts it's gonna have an official range of 421 miles, up from 394. Now my car, when I purchased it, said it had a range of 360. In reality, I didn't get anywhere near that, close to 300, I would say, on an average journey. So it'll be interesting to see how this new 421 mile range Tesla Model 3 actually gives us in the real world. This new Model 3 also incorporates an updated and more comprehensive subframe casting. Uh, we've been told that the suspension has been massively improved and they've designed these custom tires uh, so it should give you a much smoother ride. The car is also gonna be a lot more quieter as well because of all of these changes. So whether you're driving and you're going around bumpy roads, that should be quieter, but also idling in traffic as well, the acoustics of the car should be much improved. We've even heard as well that the open and closing sound of the door has been improved. And that was one thing that I was always a bit critical on when it came to my rear passenger doors on the Tesla Model 3, they're always a bit clunky. So it'll be interesting to hear what this new Tesla door close sounds like. Okay, so you've seen the car now. And what I wanna do is break down this video now into things that I think are potentially better 
and things I think that are potentially a little worrying or maybe even worse than our current models. Now, I've owned my Tesla Model 3 for two and a half years now, and these are just my opinions. If you have a different opinion, that's absolutely fine, but please leave a comment below and let me know your opinion because I'd love to hear from you. So first of all, I'm gonna be positive. Let's talk about the things that are potentially better. Now, the first is the exterior design. I think it's nice that we have a new design for the Tesla Model 3. The current design was getting a little bit dated, I think, even though I do like it, it's definitely elements like the rear of the car, which I didn't like even from the start. So I actually really like the new rear of the car. I like what they've done with the lights, what they've done with the badge, that looks fantastic. I do like that they've changed the front of the car and I think a lot of people will like this new light design. The interior upgrades are good. It makes the car feel much more modern. I really like that LED strip. So if we play this animation here again, where you can see the uh, LED light on and then the lights come up, I think this looks fantastic and really gives the car a much more modern appeal. The user interface on a Tesla has always been quite simplistic and minimalistic, but now it's going even further. We're getting rid of the indicators and the gears, and some people are gonna love this. But this is one I'm gonna talk about in a minute for the things I think that are potentially getting a little bit worse. The rear passenger experience is definitely getting better. We now have a rear screen, so your kids, your family can now watch films, play music, potentially even play some small games and control the temperature from the back. I think that's a really good thing to see. The only thing I'm slightly worried about there is really from a passenger's point of view, the, the viewing angle is kind of looking down at the floor like that. It's not gonna be great for your back. I would have loved them to have put it maybe higher up so you at least you're leaning back a little bit with your head on the headrest, but that's definitely gonna improve the user experience for your passengers. The big one, the performance and range. I mean, who can complain that we now have more miles than ever before? We don't have the official pricing, but it's looking like the pricing isn't really going up much from the current models. So if you go out and buy this new Tesla Model 3, you'll have better efficiency and more miles. Who can complain? Okay, so now let's talk about the things that either A, I'm just not a fan of, or B, I actually think are potentially worse than the current models. So let's get into it. So the first thing, other lights. Now this is the biggest change across the entire Model 3 lineup. I want to start with the back. I really like what they've done with the rear lights. I was never a fan of even the original Tesla Model 3's rear. I like what they've done with the lettering and the light system. It looks really, really nice. The front, I'm not sure I like it. Now this is something that may grow on me when I see a few out on the streets. As I say, it may just grow on me over time. but. I actually quite like the current lights of the Tesla Model 3. They're almost a little Porsche-like, and I would have liked them to have improved that a little bit more, just made them sharper looking, maybe a little bit more modern. This very small, thin light beam thing, I just, ah, uh, it's not for me. The next one, the big thing, the thing that everyone's gonna be talking about is removing the indicators and the gear shift stick from the steering wheel and replacing them with buttons. Now. In America, you know, they have grid systems, you just drive straight and pretty much you turn left or right, right? It's, it's pretty easy to drive in, in the US. If you live in Europe, especially the UK, we have a ton of roundabouts. We are constantly knocking on and off uh, that indicator and removing that and replacing it with a button, I'm just not sure if I'm a fan of. Again, this may be something that when you drive and you get used to it, it will become like second nature and you'll think, wow, it's, it's actually a lot easier, I can just do it with my thumb maybe. But I don't know, I, I, I have a feeling just the habit of just flicking it up, flicking it down, knowing where it is, it's gonna be hard to change. And I think for a lot of new users coming in, I, you know, if you have a Tesla already, the first time you got into it, the first few days feels a little alien and, and you're like, where's the climate control? How do I control this? Now it's like, oh, where do I even indicate? You know, they're removing features that I think they potentially don't need to remove just for the sake of cost saving. I'm not sure it really makes the car better. The second one is the gears. Now, this one I don't mind too much because it's an automatic car. Essentially, you're, you're driving forward most of the time and then you'd hit reverse to, to, you know, to get into a space. The only potential problem you could have, again, if you're in Europe here and you have to do a kind of like a complex three-point turn down a little country lane, tapping the screen and just constantly going over here to tap something to change the, the gear you're in, I think could be a little bit frustrating as opposed to just, you know, going into reverse and dunk, dunk, going forward again. So it's a, fa it's a change that I'm not a massive fan of, if I'm honest. 
Again, I think I need to try the car, test it out and see how I feel, but that's something I'm not a huge fan of. Now, the last one is really a controversial point. I know this will get a lot of people fired up in the comments. I was hoping they were gonna add USS ultrasonic sensors back into the car because I've driven now a couple of cars with Tesla Vision only. Mine actually has the USS, the ultrasonic sensors, and I can tell you firsthand, I don't care what anyone says, they do not work as well for parking as the Tesla Vision cameras. At best, the Tesla, Tesla Vision cameras are just guessing where something is. It's often wrong. You can drive to the same point three times and have three different readings. The uh, ultrasonic sensors work, in my opinion, perfectly 99% of the time, just because of how they work. They actually send a little um, signal and they, they bounce back and, and they're getting an accurate measurement. So I was hoping they would add this back in. They haven't, and the rumor was gonna be was that they were gonna add a camera to the front a bumper down low so even though it was still going to be tesla vision if you had a post or something came up um that you couldn't see maybe like a curb at least now would be able to see it because i've seen a few people in the forums who have like bashed their uh, front bumper because tesla vision just doesn't see it and it can't measure it either so i was hoping they were going to add this camera in at least and from what i've seen i may be wrong but i've done a lot of researching today i can't see that camera on any video review i can't see it on any pictures on tesla's website hopefully it's there and hopefully that will help tesla, tesla visions parking but it could be that it's not there at all and we're still stuck with this tesla vision after one year that still can't really handle parking all that well and i know someone's going to go well you've got eyes you know you can park but this is a 50 60 000 pound car these ultrasonic sensors are cheap they were in every single car going they work perfectly fine we now have something that doesn't work as good as that. So let me know what you think about that. I'm sure it's gonna get a few people fired up. Overall, I think though, I'm you know positive about this. I think this is a good Tesla change. It looks nice. I like the improvements to the interior. I like overall the changes to the exterior other than those front lights, but maybe they'll grow on me. Will I be upgrading my Tesla? I don't think so. I think because as I say, I, I like that I've still got the ultrasonic sensors on my car. Uh, I have the made in China model from 2021, which has probably like one of the best builds. And it was before they started removing things like the, the passenger lumbar support and things like that. So I'm gonna keep my Tesla Model 3. I really know no plan to upgrade mine. I do wanna test drive this as soon as possible though. So uh, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell if you wanna see the full review and test drive when I can get my hands on one and hopefully there'll be a Model Y update coming very soon as well. But thank you for watching and make sure to subscribe if you wanna see all the other Tesla videos I've got. I'll put a link to a video that I think you might like up here. But thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.